Greetings and praise the Lord. Uh, so once again, my pleasure to bring you today's reflections. And I want to continue um, at, uh, on the focus on the word. This is the fourth time we're talking about the focus uh, on the word. And that will be our final, uh, final series, our final uh, talk on this. And today I want to ask the question, what must we do with God's word? What must we do with God's word? God's word is here with us. God's word is here every day, but what must we do with it so that it can be able to be helpful to us, so that it can be able to build us up, so that we can be able to live by it, so that it can be able to shape our destiny and we can be able to come out as the way God intends us to be in his world. Number one, we need to get it right. Get it right. If anything is not scriptural, it's not worth your time and energy. Unfortunately, we are living in times where there are lots of things are being dropped here and there and things all over the place on the internet, social media. And sometimes it's been taking a lot of our time. Can I tell you this? If something is not scriptural, if something is not of God, it's not worth your time and energy. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, Paul writes and says, What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. So you are not just going to get it, but also guard it by protecting it against anything that is not of God. Scripture is sufficient for all that the church needs. No extra revelations, no new knowledge. And it says Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. So you get the word of God, get it right, and have all it takes for you to live in this age and even the times to come. Zeal without knowledge is dangerous. It leads to heresy, and we have many in our day. And these days, heresies are not just all over the street corners, but even on our TV channels. So if you don't get it right, you will be able to be cornered, by the various teachings and different doctrines that are being thrown all over the place. You need to, second thing, that you need to know it well. So you don't just need to get it well, but you need to know it well. Do you know the word of God well? Do you know what the Bible says? Do you know where it is found? That is important for us because when you do not know it well, People will turn it around, and by turning it around, they will turn your life around and take you off from your way in the ways of God. The third thing we need to do is we need to embrace it fully, even when it hurts. <laughs> Some things in Scripture may not seem reasonable, yet we have no choice but to trust and obey. As they say, the truth, uh, the truth is bitter. And Swahili people have a saying that says, Ukweli humiza. And that's the word of God. We need to embrace it. Though sometimes it may seem like it is not reasonable. Romans chapter 2, verse 19 to 24, the Bible 21. The Bible says, If you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of infants, because you have in the law the important of knowledge and truth. You then, who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? In other words, the word of God sometimes comes out even hard on us, we who are teachers. So that we do not just expect other people to follow the word, but we ourselves must follow it so that we actually have that embodiment of the truth that is in God's word. The fourth thing we need to do is embrace it, even if it is not popular. Sometimes the word of God doesn't seem popular, <laughs> but yet we must embrace it. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, 
Paul says all scripture is God preached and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I know sometimes we, want, we like to be referred to as men of God, you know, men of God, women of God. And when you think about what the word of God brings out, it sometimes it comes out to teach us, and we are happy about it. But sometimes it comes out to rebuke us, and we need to be ready to be rebuked. Sometimes it comes to correct us, to realign us. And sometimes it comes to train us in righteousness. We need to embrace God's word, irrespective of whether it's teaching us, it's rebuking us, it's correcting us, or it's training us. That we must do.